Tennessee is elite. On to the Elite Eight for only the second time in program history. A quick recap of Tennessee over Creighton right now in a bonus show. It's Locked On Balls. You are Locked On Balls, your daily podcast on the Tennessee Volunteers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome into Locked On Vols, this bonus show edition here late, late, late. Um, really, it's early, early, early on a Saturday morning. Tennessee takes down Creighton in the Sweet 16 final score, 82-75. Uh, big thank you guys for joining us here. I, I want to do an extra bonus episode because this is a massive deal. Um, Tennessee, for only for the second time in program history, advances on to the Elite Eight. The first time was back in 2010 when Bruce Pearl was head coach. And um, again, Tennessee has a chance to reach its first ever Final Four um, this year. And like I've been saying for weeks, and like a lot of people have been saying, this is the best opportunity for Rick Barnes. This is the best opportunity for Tennessee basketball to do just that. But first, you had to play the games in front of you, right? And Tennessee did that against St. Peter's, one in a big way. Tennessee did that against Texas, where it did not play its best basketball, but it found a way to win. And then Tennessee beat Creighton, in a 2-3 matchup in the Midwest for a spot in the regional finale. And I thought it was just a really, really good basketball game. Man, it was back and forth, back and forth, back and forth there. Late first half, early second half. Tennessee goes on an 18-0 run. An 18-0 run to, to blossom that lead. I think the largest lead for Tennessee in this game, let's see here, was at 82-75. No, that was the last lead, sorry. It was at 16 points. With 13 minutes and 59 seconds left in the ball game at 55 to 39. Tennessee had a 16 point lead coming off an 18 0 run, but then it was Creighton that responded like good teams do. Went on a, I want to say a 16 to 7 run answering that, cut it within three points at one point in time, and, and really gave Tennessee a run for its money there towards the end. But man, what a performance for Tennessee coming up towards the end of this basketball game. I thought Toby Awaka was really good. Jonas Adu did not play a good basketball game for Tennessee. Toby Walker stepped up with some critical defensive moments in this game. He went right at the big man from Creighton and found a way to get a bucket and one. And then on a free throw attempt from, I believe it was Dalton Connect or somebody, um, he you know rebounded a, off a free throw attempt and kicked it back out to Josiah Jordan James, who knocked down a three. I thought... Toby Walker was really, really good in this basketball game. One of those unsung heroes, right? What about Jemai Meshack? What an opportunity, and I'll get to this more in segment number two with the absence of Santiago Vescovi. What an opportunity there for Jemai Meshack, who was always going to get his minutes, don't get me wrong, was always going to get his minutes, but he got more of an opportunity and obviously got the start with Santi not in there. Played 25 minutes, played some really, really good defense. Eight rebounds, two assists. Four points um, and played really, really great defense at times. And he was in foul trouble the entire second half. And so he had to be really, really cautious on when he could go and, and, and exert a you know maximum amount of effort there on the defensive end. But I thought Javon Mayshack was huge in this basketball game. And obviously, um, you know, what, what Don Connect did with 24 points, what Josiah Jordan James, who really, really came to play in this game, is 17 points. Four rebounds, two assists, only two fouls in this game. Josiah Jordan James made a whole lot of winning plays. Plus, he had three trays. He was three from five from downtown, four of six overall from the field. He was super efficient. And knowing that you need to step up and be the best version of you, that's what Josiah was offensively in this basketball game. So, so much to like about this game. Um, Again, Tennessee's going on to the Elite Eight for only the second time in program history taking down Creighton 82 to 75 getting a swig of water here because obviously you can tell my voice is still a little hoarse this week but um how how many of you guys were nervous there in the second half Tennessee got that big 16 point lead but you never felt like a lead was safe right I'm just sitting here watching I'm like oh no oh no oh no oh no come on do something do something Tennessee goes on a two minute and seven you know second scoring drought essentially <laughs> and Creighton does what good teams do, and they come back and they chip away and they chip away and they chip away, and they arrive back in this basketball game. And um, 
But, I mean, Tennessee just continued to make winning plays. Another unsung hero, essentially, in this game, I thought was Jordan Ganey. Jordan Ganey played 15 minutes. He scored seven points, got off to a hot start offensively when he inserted them into the basketball game, was three of five from the field, made a three-pointer, played really, really good defense, had a couple of rebounds. Just know your role. And that's what Jordan Ganey did in this basketball game. Um, I don't know. I just I just can't say enough about Tennessee. A, a team in Creighton that averaged 29 three-point shot attempts only got up 23 three-pointers in this game. Uh, Tennessee held Creighton. Again, they shot pretty well. Both teams shot pretty well. 48% from the field for Creighton, 46% from the field for Tennessee. Tennessee made 11 of 24 three-pointers, got to the line 15 of 18. Tennessee made 15 of 18 at the, at the charity stripe, and then Creighton made 12 of 13. How about that whistle in the first half? The whistle in the first half. Tennessee got, Tennessee got I want to say, seven foul calls um, in the first half, whereas Creighton, was only only got two foul calls against them in the first half. I feel like the officials more than made up for it in the second half. Don't get me wrong, because Tennessee certainly got chances at the free throw line and all that. Um, but and, and weren't as quick to the bonus. But I did not like the whistle there in the first half for or against Tennessee really uh, for Creighton. Um, I don't know. Just uh, th- this this game had a little bit of every had a little bit of everything. It was tied five times. It had 11, excuse me, guys, had 11 lead changes. Tennessee led for 29 minutes and two seconds of this basketball game, where Creighton led for seven minutes and 18 seconds. Uh, Tennessee able to hold on, hit free throws there towards the end, 82 to 75, the final score. Hey, when we come back, I'll, talk, I'll tell you a little bit about how I thought Santiago Vescovi's absence affected this basketball game and what Tennessee has to look forward to on Sunday, Easter Sunday, who stands in Tennessee's path to reach its first ever Final Four? We'll say all that and more when we come up next, right here on Locked On Balls. Is your bracket busted, but you want to stay in the game? Introducing Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork triumphs talent and you can play with your friends, not against your friends. Pick more than or less than on real-time player stats. Strategize with your partner to boost your odds and climb the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement today. It's a way to stay connected with your friends when you can't watch sports together in person, but you can put your group chat to the test and let you prove yours is the very best. It's a sense of camaraderie with you and your friends, maybe even some family members, that you can do it better together. So I encourage you to download the app that's better together now from the App Store Sign up using the promo code Locked On for a chance to win your share of over one thousand dollars in cash prizes. Play with me in a contest on, you know, on this weekend on Sunday. And remember the code Locked On because winning alone is fun, but it's always better when you can win together. That's our friends over at Better Together, and of course, it's Nissan. Man, the Tennessee Volunteers can only be described as a Nissan Armada. Tennessee's a two seed. It's as hardcore as it gets. Defensive minded basketball team and no wonder it's on to the elite eight and it will battle with top ranked purdue for a chance at the program's first final four they're a favorite to win by many brackets uh brackets out there and in many of the you know bracket pools and all that that you might be playing with and it's been a fun run in the NCAA tournament it's going to be a fun run to see what tennessee can do against purdue the second time around so tennessee reminds you of a nissan armada but also there, there's Two other SUVs, 2024 Nissan SUVs that are worth the price of admission. That is the Nissan Pathfinder and the Nissan Rogue. Take on the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure today. You can do that at ShopNissanUSA.com. More of this bonus edition of Locked On Vols that is coming up next. All right, guys, welcome back in here to a bonus edition early, early Saturday morning of Locked On Balls. And again, this isn't going to be a long thing. I took my break at around, you know, seven minutes or so. But I did want to get some thoughts out there about Tennessee's 82-75 to win over Creighton in the Sweet 16. Because, you know, after Sunday's game, win or lose, Monday's coverage is going to be about that game. We're hardly going to have time to look back at this Creighton win um, or loss because even this Creighton win, because even if Tennessee were to win and advance onto the Final Four. I mean, why even talk about the Creighton game in the Sweet 16? Or if Tennessee were to lose and the season were to be over, why go back and talk about the Creighton win? So I wanted to get something out there for you guys, obviously, um, here on the weekend. 
So the big story going into this basketball game was the absence of Santiago Vescovi. Um, illness. As soon as he said he's got the flu and um, he's going to be reevaluated on Saturday. He's considered day to day, but he was not, he was not going to play in this basketball game. And yeah, from an offensive standpoint, that's not a big loss this year. Sure, Santi can knock down a shot. He hasn't knocked down a whole lot lately. He's not been the Santiago Vescovi four three that we've known him for the better part of the last four years. But he's still a starter in this lineup. He's still a senior in this lineup, a veteran for this basketball team that knows how to play winning basketball. I I know he's been here five years, but he just surpassed, was it Allen Houston? I don't know who it was, or Bob Yarbrough, not Bob Yarbrough, but it was somebody, Vincent Yarbrough, for whoever held the all-time steals record at Tennessee. He just surpassed that. He's gotten so much better on defense, um, and he knows how to play Rick Barnes-style defense. And um, he, he rebounds for you, and he facilitates for you. My point is, he plays winning basketball. He has changed his game. He's not sat, he's not pouted, he's not, you know, mumbled under his breath or anything. He's bought in to who Tennessee is this year. And that's with uh, a team that scores with Dalton Connect, essentially. Um, and so from a scoring perspective, that was not a big loss. And I don't think anybody should have made it out to be a big loss. But where it was a big loss was the defensive presence and just a grinder. You saw in the first half of points in time, that rotation, man, it was not great. You had Freddie DeLeon in the basketball game. Um, you had Cam Carr, <coughs> excuse me, Cam Carr in the basketball game, and he actually came in and shot a three, which was really, really awesome for him. But when DeLeon was in the basketball game, man, there were some defensive lapses, and that's when Creighton was making one of those runs and kind of took one of those leads there late in the first half, and it was evident. I mean, Tennessee's rotation was severely impacted with the absence of, of Santiago Vesco. Obviously, you're taking a taking a player out. And I mean, you know, you take a player out and it just kind of is what it is. But um, you saw that a little bit in the first half. You didn't see it as much in the second half, but you saw that a little bit in the first half. And um, man, I hope he gets better. I know I sound like I'm super sick and I, I'm actually feeling a lot better towards the end of this week. But, you know, when your industry is you talk every single day, it's hard to get your voice and your throat to feel better because you're continually talking, um, continuously talking. But nonetheless, you hope and, and you pray for Santiago Vespi to get healthy, that he can play in this basketball game. You know it just had to tear him up to miss this basketball game, not be able to play with his friends and his teammates on the on the biggest game of his career uh, as a super senior. Um, but hopefully he'll get back and he'll be able to give Tennessee another option and, and not have that rotation so depleted, if you will, against Purdue. And we know what stands in the way uh, you know, for a Final Four for Tennessee, and that's Purdue. <clears throat> Excuse me, Tennessee's already played Purdue one time in the Maui Invitational. We know all about Zach Eady. We know about the whistle that Zach Eady's going to implore. I did not watch, um, I was covering baseball, so I didn't get to watch Gonzaga and Purdue, but saw a couple different clips like I do each and every time Purdue plays. And you have Z Zach Eady that's just mauling over people and pushing people down left and right, and there's no whistle called. It's almost like Zakai Ziegler getting a bloody nose in the first half and there's no whistle called. Um, okay. It just is what it is. The presumed best player in the country, the presumed national player of the year before the season even started, he gets a different whistle than everybody else. So just prepare yourself. It's going to be annoying. It's going to be frustrating. He's going to get a different whistle than anybody else on the court, and he's going to shoot 18 free throws. It's going to be super annoying. Toby Iwaka has got to stay disciplined. Jonas Adu has got to stay disciplined. You're going to see a lot of J.P. Estrella in this game, not a whole lot, but you're going to see some just like you did against Creighton because, again, I think Tennessee is going to have a fouling issue because everybody that plays Purdue fouls Zach Eady because that's just how the officials call it. And he goes to the line, and he scores an uneventful 20 points at the line, and it's not super exciting like it is with Dalton Connect when he's putting up 40, you know, making five or six three-pointers in the game. Um, heck of a player. Going to be a really good NBA player, in my opinion. Um but it's not very exciting, to be completely honest. And he is a guy that is uh, going to be a real challenge for Tennessee. I'm intrigued to see what Tennessee does defensively to try to stop Edie this go around. Um, but I'm super excited to see it. Tennessee, Elite Eight bound for only the second time in program history. Going back to the Elite Eight for the first time since 2010. If you win against Purdue, number one seed Purdue on Sunday, you go to the you go to the final four for the first time ever in program history. How about them apples? How exciting 
is that going to be? One more time, looking at a couple of the stats here for Tennessee over Creighton. Tennessee did the little things to win this basketball game. Tennessee out-rebounded Creighton 36-34. Tennessee won the offensive rebounding 12-7. Tennessee beat Creighton in second chance points 15-10. Tennessee beat Creighton in bench points 15-4. Tennessee and Creighton actually tied with points in the paints at 30. Tennessee beat them in, in fast break opportunities, 18 to five points. Tennessee had five blocks. Creighton had two blocks. Tennessee had five steals. Creighton had one steal. Tennessee had 16 assists. Creighton had 13 assists. All those stats, sometimes you can lose one and still win the game. But if you win all those stats, chances are you're going to win the basketball game. And that is what Tennessee did on a Friday night. Late, late Friday night. Tennessee 82, Creighton 75, and I can't wait to see the Tennessee Volunteers basketball team take part against Purdue for the second time this year on Easter Sunday. That's going to be a 220 tip in the afternoon, 220, and we'll see if Tennessee's going to continue dancing um, on into the Final Four. Hey, I'm Eric Kane here, Locked On Vols. This has been a bonus, a bonus episode here of Locked On Vols. Tennessee, Sweet 16 victorious has won in the Sweet 16 both times, <coughs> excuse me, has won in the Sweet 16 both times on a Friday, not a Thursday. And my buddy also tells me this will be the first time Tennessee will be playing a higher seed or a lower seed than that of the Volunteers. Tennessee will be a two seed. Purdue will be the one seed. This will be the first time Tennessee under Rick Barnes will have played a, a, a lower seed than its own. And that's coming up on Sunday. So a lot to look forward to. Hopefully my voice will be much, much better on Sunday, but we'll talk about it all on a Monday morning Lockdown Balls. Appreciate you guys for being here. Have a great rest of your weekend, everybody.